how is the course fault? Uh, in, a, in a way, from the beginning, we wanted this to be a very practical course. We didn't want just to teach theory uh, and uh, this is how the language looks like or this is how one can use the other rules in theory. We wanted this to be very practical. So we started by taking a lot of uh, examples from our experience, from all these big cases uh, we hunted throughout the years, big APTs, big uh, targeted crime operations that we investigated. We took all our experience from these cases, uh, the Yara rules that we created and the stories behind these uh, Yara rules, and we put them into an uh, online format. And uh, all together, this basically encapsulates um, over five years of uh, hunting APTs with Yara from the global research and analysis team into a medium that you can uh, play with online coupled with the um, all different, let's say tools uh, that are out there such as P Studio, a very uh, cool tool for initial malware assessment, Hue, FAR and so on. So all together you get the experience of uh, not just, let's say, developing Yara rules, but you get the experience of following along um, these big stories that were released throughout the years. Uh, big APT groups such as uh, Wild Neutron, Equation, Sophocy, and so on, they all appear throughout this exercise. And we show you uh, innovative ways, sometimes very creative approaches to detecting malware used by these different groups. So the history to the course is um, a couple of years ago, we realized there's a lot of interest in um, having, let's say, quality Yara rules. A lot of people out there um, say or do write Yara rules. However, very few of them are what we call quality Yara rules. So we put together, together with my colleagues, a, a very nice, very practical uh, set of exercises that we thought uh, can help people to improve their Yara rules. They can uh, learn how to write better rules, uh, how to make them faster, and how to avoid false positives. And uh, the first one, we um, did it in uh, 2015, and we kept improving the course uh, using uh, feedback from the attendees. We incorporated new exercises, we incorporated new advice. Uh, as Yara evolved, we also evolved uh, the course. We improved some of the exercises, made them more interesting, more practical. Uh, in the end, we wanted to make this uh, a very pleasant, but also very helpful, entertaining and relevant course. So where did the idea come from to put the course online? Uh, well, we are actually, we were supposed to do the next Yara training uh, at the uh, SAS Security Analyst Conference uh, in uh, Barcelona in 2020. Unfortunately, nature had different plans and we were forced uh, to cancel it due to the COVID-19 pandemic. At the same time, a lot of people asked uh, what's going to happen with the Yara training. We really want to attend it. So this is how the idea to take this course online appeared. Uh, together with a couple of my colleagues, um, we thought very carefully on uh, how to move what used to be, let's say, a very uh, um, <clears throat> direct, a very practical um, two days workshop in which we uh, worked very closely with the attendees. How can we take this physical workshop online? And uh, we, uh, we, we wanted to do actually a bit more than just that. We wanted to make these exercises relevant for the online, not just to take the exercises we did in the class uh, and put them on some website, but we actually, we wanted to adapt the entire training to the online delivery platform. And this is how our uh, X training uh, Yara course uh, was born. We adapted some of the uh, exercises in order to take advantage of the platform of the virtual lab, uh, as well as the possibility to ask questions and uh, to choose between different answers. This is uh, in a way much more personal. It's more practical at the same time. It allows you to go through the training at your own pace. You don't have to rush through these two days. You can uh, do the exercises uh, in two days, you can do them in two weeks, uh, you can even do them in two months if uh, this is what your schedule allows. So the online training from this point of view is much more 
uh, suited to, uh, let's say, a lot of participants out there, to a lot of people who want to learn how to use Yara more effectively. And because of that, we think that uh, it not just matches the same quality as the physical, but actually it surpasses it in some ways. So what software do you need to take this course? The good news is uh, everything, everything you need is already available in the virtual lab. So um, you can fully attend and you can fully go through the entire course by using the uh, virtual lab. This means that you don't have to install anything on your machine. There's no additional uh, software, except of course, uh, if you want to play with these tools locally and uh, Afterwards, once uh, you complete the course, uh, of course, you will need uh, uh, Yara, you will need P Studio, and uh, if you're a reverse engineer, you can even install uh, or use IDA or uh, Guider. So the good news is that in order to get rid of the course, you don't need to install any tools. Everything is packaged nicely into the virtual lab. You have everything you need in there, including access to our uh, in the cloud the system called Clara that allows you to test your rules for false positives and detections. And uh, this, I think, makes it much more practical. It's easier. It doesn't matter if you uh, work on a Mac, Linux, and Windows, because in the virtual lab, you can use all these tools without having to change your preferred working uh, environment. So is there any um, coursework or homeworks throughout the course? Uh, we try to um, make a combination between uh, practical exercises that uh, people can uh, solve on their own and there uh, an assessment of the knowledge obtained during the, the last section. So um, for instance, when we teach strings or when we teach some of the Yara syntax, uh, we then apply that in some exercises. And after the exercises are finished, some of the questions that you can see uh, and that you are required to pass in order to move to the next uh, segment, they're related both to the exercise, but also to the theory. Um, the important part here is that all these questions, they're designed in such a way that uh, um, knowledge required to pass is uh, combines both the practical experience and the theory while at the same time being extremely practical. So we are not asking, uh, let's say uh, irrelevant theory questions. We are asking questions uh, which are relevant and they are applicable in real life uh, thread hunting. So all these are things that you will use in the future. You'll use them throughout your career, uh, writing your rules in a practical manner. So all these, uh, let's say assessments, all the assessments that you have to pass in order to move from one segment to another, they're all very practical and relevant to threat hunting with Yara. So what knowledge or skills do you need in order to take this course? Um, I guess uh, the good news here is that we try to um, work with pretty much uh, all the basic concepts in order to make everybody familiar with the tools and with the Yara syntax. So uh, of course, uh, people have some experience in uh, programming that helps uh, simply writing Yara rules in essence is a kind of uh, programming. Um, some people like to think about it as uh, maybe uh, writing regular expressions. Personally, I think that Yara uh, rules are more similar to a programming language. So experience with programming languages uh, definitely helps. Uh, experience with the reverse engineering also helps, although it's not necessary. The good news is that our course is designed in such a way that anyone can complete it without any kind of reverse engineering work. So uh, that uh, alone, I think that it makes it much more accessible to, to people out there. Um, also experience in working with malware, at least let's say uh, initial uh, malware assessment is also very helpful, although not entirely necessary. We will show you how to use PE Studio and other tools for initial malware assessment. And in essence, I guess, um, pretty much anyone who is interested in threat hunting, even you have, they have just maybe a very slight idea of how threat hunting works. Even if they have just maybe very little experience in this field that makes them uh, the perfect candidate for this course.